Hello everybody, in this lesson we are going to be looking at Matthew Bourne and we're going to start at the beginning looking at his background and training. The reason why we need to know about Bourne's background and training is so that we can be analytical when we're looking at his dance works and we can trace back why he might have used certain things within his choreography. So let's start by looking at a few of these, um, these images. These are of different Bourne works. Do you know which works these are, firstly? And then I want you to have a think about what do you think about Bourne's choreographic style? So how does he use physical setting? How does he use costume, lighting, set design? Do you know anything yet about Matthew Bourne's influences? Can these be seen within any of these images? Do you know anything about Matthew Bourne's movement style? Can these be seen within the images? Okay, let's move on. Let's have a look at his background and training. But I want you to keep coming back to his works and thinking about why does he do that? Okay, so let's have a look at Matthew Bourne's background. So he was born in the East End of London in 1960. This is a quote from Bourne. When I was young, I believed that you could be cured by music. So he's always had such a passion for how music makes him feel. And this was fueled by his parents and can obviously now be seen in his works as well. When he was um, younger, um, from the age of about five or six, he was putting on his own productions um, with other children in his, um, in his street and he was inviting people to come and watch these. So he always had this passion for putting on productions. But it was a passion for musical theatre um, and stage shows that he had from a young age. So um, he would actually, when he was at school, when he was about eight or nine, he says that he was allowed to invite other children um, and cast them in his shows. And he'd actually, from a young age, be interested in casting men and, as women and women as men. So he'd get his brother to dress up as an ugly sister in Cinderella. Um, and it was only when he was 19 that he actually saw his first ballet, which was Swan Lake. Before then, it was all obsessions over MGM musicals. He had a real obsession over Sound of Music. I mean, I'd watched that so many times. Um, and he loved watching Fred Astaire, um, Fred Astaire films with his parents. And it was always his dancing that really inspired him. Um, he did try the acting route, so when he was 15 he went to Mount View Theatre School um, for an evening course in acting, uh, but he just said that it wasn't the right form of expression for him. He hated speaking and he hated the drama games, um, and when he actually reflects on what it is about musicals that he loved so much, he said it was the big numbers that he was really, really drawn to. Um, and then when he saw Swan Lake for the first time in 1979 as his, as his first ballet, he said that what impressed him was the seriousness of the dance. So I think you can really see in his works now this collaboration between and this fusion between the ballet and the musical theatre and the stage show elements um, that yeah you see in his work today. Let's have a look at Matthew Bourne's training. So he did belong to a dance group that was based at a local church that he went to um, when he was younger, but he hadn't actually received any formal training before he auditioned for Laban Dance Centre. Um, he hadn't done a proper dance class of any sort um, before he auditioned um, and he was quite self-taught. Um, he says that he watched lots of performances and he copied from videos and other people. And he never thought of technique or warming up. He just would just start dancing. That's what he did. Um, but in 1982, at the age of 22, he gained his place at Laban Dance Centre, which is quite late, really, to start dancing um, at a professional level. 
He says now that he's not sure he would actually get onto the course if it was today. And he doesn't think that he impressed the audition panel through his dancing. He thinks what impressed them was his knowledge and how much interest he had for theatre and how much he had seen. So he thinks that that's what really intrigued him, which was obviously from his background that I've just previously spoken about. At Laban, he studied ballet. He was introduced to modern dance. He... um, did movement studies, he looked at the history of dance and music and there was a great deal of emphasis on the academic and written side of the degree course as well as the practical. Um, And after graduating he spent a further year in Transitions which is the centre's course for dance graduates where he um, did a lot of his professional dance training and also got the chance to put on choreography performances here. And he also quotes that he always learnt more, though, from watching choreography than actually learning about it in a lecture or um, learning about structures um, and learning about all those sorts of things. So he says that he feels that his training of choreography came through all of the stuff that he um, had watched. Now I would like to come back to what I did at the start, which is where we had a look at the different Bourne works and we thought about why his choreographic style is the way it is. So I'd like you to do a, I'd like you to pause the video and do a little bit of research um, looking at different Bourne works and think about how did his early experiences in dance have an impact upon his choreographic style? Okay, so you might think about the subject matter, sources, use of physical setting, oral setting, all of these things that are on the mind map. Okay, so I'd like you to have a think about that now and make some notes. For further study around Bourne's background and training, there are lots of different places that you can go to. The best sources that I have found um, are the Matthew Bourne book. It's a really massive Um, a really massive book but the first couple of chapters are all about his early life and training there is also a brilliant youtube video on him which you might have seen before it's called insight conversations with matthew bourne and at the start he talks all about his childhood and his upbringing and his training at laban and there is also a really fantastic bbc radio 4 podcast which you can listen to Um, on the internet or through Spotify so you can pop it on your headphones Um, and what's really good about this one is it talks all about um, his favourite music um, through growing up um, and through his childhood which is really interesting as well because we know that music has had a massive massive um, impact upon Matthew Bourne okay so hopefully that helps